Welcome to LGMD Day on the Hill, and it's really exciting for all of us that are here today. This is an event that we've been planning quite a long time. Our goal was to have LGMD Day on the Hill the same month that we have Muscular Dystrophy Awareness and the same week of our LGMD Awareness Day that Carol Abraham's going to come on later and talk to us about. And this Advocacy Day today, September 22nd, was going to be an in-person event um, in Washington, D.C., but due to COVID, we've decided to do this virtually. And Ralph Yanez is our volunteer director, and he'll come on in a moment, and he'll be sharing about how to advocate today. We've got some downloadables on the Speak Foundation website that we want to tell you about. It's really easy to get to that. Just go to this speakfoundation.com. And the downloadables for today are easy for you to access. You can download them. One of them is the letter to your congressman or woman. And you can actually use the template we've given you. There's also a fact sheet for LGMD that you can download. And then Ralph will share with you how to actually find your congressman or woman. And there's actually a downloadable for that. It's really easy. We've made it so simple so that you can be an advocate today for Convertal. So we're excited for you to be here. Remember, we're giving away two mobility scooters at the end of the event. So stick with us because we're gonna be doing that at the end of the event today. So we have a lot planned. I'm excited for you to be here. Um, we're also wanting to share with you that today's LGMD Day on the Hill is sponsored by AskBio. AskBio supports the heroes of the LGMD community. This is a great company that is developing gene therapy for one of the subtypes for limb girdle muscular dystrophy. And they are a wonderful company. And we will um, actually have a webinar with them um, sometime later this year or first of next year. We also want to let you know, and we'll talk more about this actually today. Uh, Brad Williams is with us, and he'll be sharing about the National Limb Girdle Muscular Dystrophy Conference, which will be September 17th through the 20th. And we will talk a little bit more about that today, so I'm not going to go into that too much right now. And if you are an individual with Limb Girdle Muscular Dystrophy Type 2i, ML Biosolutions has a webinar that will be presented October 9th at 2 p.m. You are invited. It is a promising new oral treatment for LGMD2I. They're going to be presenting an update on the development of BBP418 Ribitol. So if you're interested in hearing more about the Ribitol study, of what this is about, you need to be at this webinar because the team from ML Bio will be present with us, Dr. Sproul, and also Dr. Nick Johnson from Grasp LGMD will be here. And we'll be hosting that webinar for you on October 9th. You can sign up at the speakfoundation.com. It's on our homepage, just scroll down and you can get the link directly to register for this webinar. So at this point, I'm gonna welcome Ralph Yanez, who is our volunteer director for our 2020 LGMD Day on the Hill. Ralph is a wonderful guy. I've just enjoyed getting to know him this year and he is so much fun and so educated on how to lobby. Um, he has worked in this area for years and he served as the executive director of the Florida Society of Clinical Oncology Foundation in 2016. He helped establish that organization and he began serving the community. Ralph also founded the LGMD2L Foundation. And so this treatment um, and foundation is to find um, treatments for 2L. And he also was a lobbyist for the AARP. So at this point, we're going to welcome Ralph on, and then he's going to start talking to you about the different things that we're lobbying for today for LGMD Day on the Hill. So Ralph, um, if you'll come on and just share with us your screen and, and talk with us. Great. Well, it's, it's good to be here. Um, this is really just a, a fabulous opportunity for 
the limb girdle community, and I think the bigger uh, muscular dystrophy community. I'm going to begin to um, work on setting up my screen because sometimes it takes a couple of minutes, but what I want to do um, uh, really today is just talk about the, the bigger picture for a moment. Um, so, um, you know, I, I think all of us really have talked about uh, this exciting day. And as Catherine said, I'm going to put this first slide up, but, but continue to do an, a quick intro. So as Catherine said, we um, have been talking about Lobby Day for almost a year now. And uh, obviously our hope was to be there in person. Uh, Eights went in a different direction. So we are going to do um, some great work today and we need all of you, um, after the hour of this call, you're gonna really be doing some good work, reaching out, uh, doing some emails to your uh, members of Congress. So what I wanna do today, um, as Catherine mentioned, um, remember on the Speak Foundation site, so the Speak Foundation, all one word, dot com, we have all three of the documents I'm going to be putting up on the screen. Um, so all of you can go to the website and download those. Um, but what I'm gonna cover today is the document you see in front of you, which is a backgrounder, which is going to be one of the attachments that we will be sending our members of Congress because we thought it was so important uh, for them to really understand. We know they're not going to know what this is all about. You know, I go to my primary physician and they often don't know what this is about. So we can't really expect uh, members of Congress to know. So we wanted to do this one pager um, as an educational piece uh, for them. Um, so I'm gonna go through this in a moment and then I'll show you the second attachment uh, to your email that will really focus on um, a letter uh, with our campaign around accessibility and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can look up your members of Congress so you can get these uh, three emails done. What we would want uh, everyone to do is uh, three emails. You, you have two state senators, remember, and then you'll have one representative that uh, represents you from your state. And we would love for all three uh, to get information. Um, and then I'll remind you um, after I go through this, but at the end, once you're done, um, I want to hear from you and get an email in terms of the senators and the representatives you contacted. Um, and I will be available all afternoon um, for the uh, rest of the morning, too, for some of you on the West Coast and later in the afternoon if you have any problems um, getting your information done or any glitches or anything, you can email me. And I'll share that in a moment. But let me, let me start with this first um, document. We took a lot of time really to work on putting together um, a big picture of what limb girdle muscular dystrophy is. Now keep in mind there are 30 some different limb girdle muscular dystrophies. Uh, about a half dozen uh, dominant, the rest are autosomal recessive, but it's a lot of information. So um, as you read through this, you know, some of this may or may not pertain specifically to your form of muscular dystrophy. You know, I can look at this and say, you know, there's a couple here that maybe for 2L might be a little different, but this really does a great job of giving our members of Congress a good sense of the big picture and what limb girdle muscular dystrophies are about. So I would recommend uh, for all of you to, um, before you begin to work on your emails, to take time to read these dozen or so bullet points so you understand. It's always important that you know um, and understand what you're sending to your members of Congress. And one of the things we wanna do today, the way you have success in lobbying is to have a consistent message. What we're doing today is really just beginning work that will go over the next few years at least or beyond. You know, my hope is maybe next year we will get to Washington DC in person, maybe a few dozen of us and be able to make some bigger headlines. But we're starting something big today. So I wanna make sure you're with us on the ground floor and um, understand what we're sending each of your members of Congress. So let me click into the um, second page, which, which was really developed as a generic um, letter to our members of Congress. Again, you're going to do an email uh, and I'll share my sample email, which is also in those downloadables. Uh, but, but this document then will be really an attachment that focuses on what we have 
talked about for many, many years, this whole issue about uh, the right to access and our ca campaign around the right to access. And specifically, you can see on the screen, uh, we put a uh, half dozen issues that we think are critical. There are more, you know, we struggle with accessibility all the time, but if you look at healthcare, um, number two is a big one because we know over the next few years, gene therapy and other um, advanced treatments are going to be critical. And how do we, you know, as individuals with these rare illnesses, access some of these available treatments that are going to be, I think, uh, amazing coming down the pike. So I think we need to keep that in mind. And then some of the things we struggle with every day, you know, personal care assistance, um, life-saving care during a pandemic. I think many of us uh, heard about um, issues and stories that were not good in terms about, uh, of people with disabilities during the pandemic. And then obviously fair and equitable housing and uh, airline travel. You know, everywhere we go, I know Catherine, we talked about this, but everywhere we go, um, people are talking about the need to get out of a wheelchair, to get into another chair, to get into your seat, uh, people getting hurt or wheelchairs being destroyed. And so this is a very important issue that we want to focus on. So again, I would recommend, and really I want all of you to be able to look through the, the, this attachment that you're going to put in. And it really covers a lot of information about, um, you know, each of these accessibility issues. Just, a, you know, a paragraph on each that really gives our elected officials the importance of these needs for our communities as we go forward. So let's talk now about the work you'll be doing after this call. I know we have some great segments coming up, but once we finish, um, let me put up this one pager that is again um, on the website, on the Speak Foundation website. But to look up your elected officials, um, there's a lot of ways to do it, and you may have other ways that you've used in the past. But if you go to this website here, the govtrack.us slash congress slash members, you'll be able to put in your state. So for me, I can put in Illinois, and it will give me my two senators. Uh, you know, those senators cover the entire state. It's not that they divvy it up and they each take half. You know, both of those senators are yours, are your elected officials. Um, and then once you get that information, you can also hit a link to representatives. There, uh, you do have to put in your full address because remember, um, your representative, they brought, there they break out the state into districts. So you will have one representative that is yours. And from that information, you will be able to get their email and other data on them. And that will allow you then to really go into the second piece. Now here, I, I've added my email because again, I will be available. Uh, if you're having any glitches, any problems uh, in the next couple of hours after we finish the call, um, let me know, shoot me an email. I'll get back to you ASAP if I'm on with someone else. It may be a few minutes, but I'll guide you through if we have to do a call or do a video or something, we'll do that. Um, and then here is a sample. So I want to go through this sample that I did. Um, and then all of you can kind of get a sense um, of how we want to do it. Again, these, these are samples. The more information you can put that is, uh, you know, about you local, um, you know, uh, personalizing it, um, knowing that you're a constituent of theirs, then ultimately the better that is. Um, so as you can see here, I, I did use Congresswoman because I know her and that's how she likes to be called. You may say representative, uh, obviously if it's a senator, you can say senator um, and their name. And then I, I wrote mine so it fit me. So as a constituent of your district and someone with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, I'm writing on this special occasion. So I outlined that today we are doing our advocacy day, uh, lobby day for limb girdle muscular dystrophy. And as we approach awareness day, I wanted to make sure I added that on September 30th. Um, and today we have patients who, are, who have been diagnosed with LGMD writing to their elected officials. And uh, so I mentioned then in the second paragraph that we do have a, a tutorial for them, kind of an educational piece on LGMD 
And then I mentioned the third attachment that you will attach to your, the second attachment that you will add to your email, which is the letter that talks about the right to access campaign. And then I close it out. And I, I think it's always important to make sure that they know we're going to get back in touch with them. Uh, and we will, um, which is why, as I mentioned earlier, once you've finished with these three emails, um, I would love for you to send me an email and let me know, you know, I contacted Senator so-and-so, Senator so-and-so, and Representative so-and-so, and that, that way we have the information. Um, also, for those of you, I thought I'd add this in, but for those of you that are not yet officially a part of our advocate volunteer database, if you're interested, let me know and um, I'll reach back to you on information that we need to get you into that database. But we've already built a fabulous um, list of uh, advocate volunteers, dozens of people around the country in all four time zones uh, on the mainland and uh, probably some beyond. And um, so I wanna make sure we keep growing that as we go forward. So I think we, we have what we need. I have maybe two minutes I wanna recap. Uh, once we finish with the call here, uh, all of you can go to the site, uh, find your senators and representatives and their emails, develop an email like the one you're seeing here on the screen that you can personalize, and then you can put in those two downloadable attachments and get those out. And we are gonna follow up with those, um, all of those uh, letters and make sure that people know and get additional information. So what I will do now, uh, Catherine, is turn it back to you, I will stop, uh, sharing screen so we're all set and uh, I'm looking forward to just a fabulous day because this is the start of something big. You know it really is Ralph and you did such a great job I mean there are just you're the person to do this. Um, you know I wanted to even just touch on a couple of the issues you brought up. Um, accessible housing and we have the ADA but the ADA lacks in so many ways with the rental um, housing community. Um, so if you've ever tried to rent an apartment or rent a home and you use a wheelchair, you're going to immediately notice that there is a lack of accessibility. And especially if you're not in Section 8 housing. So in Section 8 housing, they have special guidelines that are more stringent, but a lot of people are income earners and working with their disabilities and are able to purchase like a more expensive apartment or rental home. And that market is totally not accessible to people with wheelchairs. Um, the doorways are supposed to be a certain width, and most of the times they're not. The turn radiuses are supposed to be a certain distance, and most of the time they're not. And the problem is we've got to start speaking up and be very loud, and this is the way to do it. Because if you go into Congress versus your state government, if you go national, then the states have to follow. But if you go just to your individual states, it's a battle that we're all gonna fight in every single state. But going into the federal government and working through legislators to try to get things done like this and the other issues that Ralph mentioned, um, Ralph mentioned the airport issue again with the planes because that one's huge, isn't it? Yeah, you know, the, the issue of, accessibility to airplanes has been uh, a battle that we've been fighting uh, for a long time. There are organizations like All Wheels Up that have been working on this. And for somebody who's in a wheelchair, um, right now the difficulty is they need to be lifted into one of those smaller chairs that fit down the aisle, rolled down to their seat, then again lifted into a seat um, or helped into a seat. Uh, or give up their chair, obviously, which is then stowed away. And uh, we know that uh, the concept has already been proven because All Wheels Up and others have done actual FDA approved crash tests. Um, you know, anything that the industry has pushed back on, I think we've shown that if they can allow a couple of seats uh, on a flight, a couple of open spaces in front or 
Um, you know, especially airplanes that board in the middle and have those first couple of seats where a wheelchair can just roll onto the plane, uh, be um, strapped down at the bottom uh, with straps that hold because we've tested them. Um, it would make a big difference for people with disabilities in terms of uh, uh, being able to access planes. Now, there are other issues. I mean, you know, I'm not using a wheelchair and yet I've flown a lot and I've had a lot of issues. So we need to make sure that full airplane accessibility is achieved by the airlines. Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's really no reason why someone couldn't stay in their wheelchair and get on a plane. And just the injuries that occur from lifting someone who is fragile. Um, and as you all know, as your progression of your muscular dystrophy uh, continues, it becomes more difficult to, to lift you. Um, your body just can't, it's not sturdy enough to hold its shape. And so, you know, it can be very dangerous to lift someone. And so then it prevents someone from even being able to travel because they don't want to be lifted. But you know, Ralph, I even think about this other issue we talked about is the personal care attendant issue. And this one is just so frustrating because in order to get personal care assistance, most people have to have Medicaid. And to have Medicaid, you have to limit your income. And last time I checked, I think it's around 700 a month that you can't make any more than that. There are waiver programs that you can qualify for, but the waiting list for the waiver programs is so long. Oftentimes people are waiting years to get into them. And the unfortunate situation is people are having to pay out of pocket for personal care assistance just so they can go to work every day. Um, I know four and a half years ago, the Speak Foundation started a personal care attendant program where we pay people who work full time to help them with personal care assistance. We do this program. I don't know if anybody is aware that we actually provide personal care assistance funding for people who work full time. But it's because we started that program because there wasn't a program in the nation that really addressed this. Ralph, what is what do you have to say about that? Because I know that is a frustration for many, many people who need help getting dressed and getting food and getting ready, taking showers. What's your thought on that? Yeah, I agree completely. I think we, we need to really rethink this. I mean, the ability even for individuals to may not only make money, but to have some small savings, um, you know, if they lose their, um, if they end up with, um, you know, that they end up losing sometimes their ability to access some of this assistance. Um, you know, it really uh, is something that our lawmakers have to look at. And I think there's a better way to do it. Yeah, I agree completely. That's right. Um, we had a, a person that uh, in the audience and they said that they might need help with typing because um, they have a hard time with the typing. So I was going to tell anybody in the audience, um, Ralph has got his email on the downloadables and he's willing to help anybody this afternoon with that. Is that correct, Ralph? Yes, exactly. Just shoot me an email and, if, and let me know the best way to connect. Um, you know, I can respond to you. I can call you. We'll figure it out. And if anybody needs help with that, we can work on the letter and uh, get the email out. Yeah, absolutely. Like we want to make it easy for you to, to participate and we're willing, we're willing to help. So um, I want to say, Ralph, thank you so much. I, I really think that going forward, the voice of the LGMD community needs to be very loud in these matters. I feel like we need to speak up more. I, I'm not sure that we really speak up enough about these issues. And I think just putting this in front, so this is going to be published, this entire event will be published on our platform. But if you're watching this and it's, you know, and it's September 22nd today, but this is like November by the time you watch this, the downloadables will still be on the website. There's nothing preventing you from taking our campaign and sending it to your uh, congressman or congresswoman. You know, you can do this all throughout the year um, and you should, you know, always be advocating for these issues because that one vote 
that they might cast might be this issue, it might affect this issue, and you can make a difference. Okay, at this point, thank you so much, Ralph. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Okay. Okay, at this point, we're going to introduce Brad Williams. Hey, Brad. Hi, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. Brad is our chairman of the National LGMD Conference, which is going to be the International LGMD Conference for 2021. And Brad, I know that you're, you've got a slide you want to share. Um, and I'm going to give you a second to put that up, of course. But um, so to the background, I think, is important for everybody to understand. So about five years ago, I would say that Brad and I uh, have kind of had a partnership for the last five years where we've kind of um, been working together. Uh, the Speak Foundation, um, really for the last six years, has been making um, a lot of connections with biotech and pharmaceutical industries. Uh, we spent years uh, developing um, relationships, sending out emails, connecting with CEOs of startup companies that could be interested in the LGMD space. Um, just putting out this disease, because it's a rare disease, but getting interest from um, drug developers. And so we spent a lot of time doing that. Brad, I know, spent a lot of time doing that. And then, Brad, let's talk about where we are and why we started this National Lingual Muscular Dystrophy Conference, because I remember it was about three years ago, two and a half, three years ago now. Um, I remember one night I was just in my house thinking about the new gene therapies that were on the horizon for limb girdle. And that really, really about three years ago, really it was so new. No one really had heard about the fact that limb girdle was getting ready to get gene therapies that they were starting. And I remember that night you and I talked on the phone about it. Talk, tell me, remember, how we talked about having this national conference remind me about remind everyone about that well uh yeah so so i remember um you know catherine you uh you know called me up and i think it was shortly before the uh the speak conference you know that that year which is you know typically in in atlanta in july or august and you said brad uh, I think we need to have a, you know, national limb girdle muscular dystrophy conference, and I'd like to have it sometime uh, about a year from now. And um, uh, long story short, uh, it happened. Uh, so, you know, uh, Catherine uh, Carroll, who you'll hear from in just a little bit, and, and I were the primary organizers. Okay, so what is, what is the National um, Muscular Dystrophy Conference and why is it there? Okay, well, uh, for drug development, there's, you know, a lot of different aspects. You know, a lot of times people will read, um, you know, a news article that some researcher has discovered some new promising treatment that maybe works in mice. Okay. It's a long ways from there until you have a drug that people can, you know, go somewhere and actually receive treatment for their disease. And part of that is uh, having uh, readiness for clinical trials. So that requires uh, researchers who know about the disease, uh, pharma companies who are interested in developing treatments for the disease, uh, patients who are diagnosed and can participate in clinical trials, as well as enough knowledge about the disease so that you can design the clinical, you know, there's some tests that will tell you whether the treatment is working. So, and, you know, and on top of that, uh, because limb girdle muscular dystrophies are such rare diseases, a lot of patients have tended to feel very isolated. Uh, a lot of them, you know, the people who came to the conference in 2019 uh, had never met another patient. And, you know, meeting another patient for the first time is a really, you know, momentous experience in 
uh, the lives of many people with LGMD. So kind of there's three major, um, you know, parts, uh, purposes of the conference. You know, one is to, you know, tell patients about, you know, new research and treatments that are being developed. Uh, another is to um, uh, prepare for clinical trials. It's called clinical trial readiness. Um, and also, um, you know, in, until we have treatments, uh, you know, people with LGMD need to live with their diseases and live their lives now. So there's a lot of information on, you know, how do people live with um, LGMDs? You know, what are some life hacks, you know, that we can share with each other? What have other people, you know, done to make uh, their life work for them? So, you know, it's kind of a combination of different things. And also for, um, for clinicians, researchers, drug developers, uh, and the patient community to all, you know, get to know each other so we can, you know, all, you know, learn who, you know, who each other is, what's happening in this disease and, and move forward. Uh, you know, I'll just say that, you know, in uh, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy field, um, you know, and actually we had the keynote as a keynote speaker, Pat Furlong, who is the founding president of Parent Project for Muscular Dystrophy, which is focused on Duchenne, uh, who really blazed a trail in advocacy. Um, that's what we've been trying to do for uh, the LGMD space. Okay, so um, with the um, uh, COVID situation and the uncertainty of, you know, you know, where, how are things going to be a year from now, which, you know, we don't necessarily have a good way of knowing, uh, we decided that we would have a, a virtual conference this time. But being virtual also makes it easier to be an international conference, not just a national conference. It turns out that last time, uh, even though it was billed as a national conference, there were people from, I believe, like 12 or 14 different countries there. So it was international anyway, but now it's going to be officially international. Uh, and um, so we're, you know, starting to work right now about, um, you know, putting together the program. Uh, registration is going to be uh, beginning in uh, next April, and it's going to be uh, September 17th through 20th uh, of next year. So uh, just a little less than a year from now. So um, uh, Catherine, uh, over to you. Oh, great job. Um, you know, I was thinking because uh, Carol Abraham is on our team as well, and she's going to come on in a minute, but she um, Brad, myself, and really a host of many, 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 many people made this happen because there's no way really one organization can put something like this on. It was a team of us and it was um, Sarah from the Jane Foundation who is Brad's co-worker helped immensely with just helping to um, do the just production at the event um, Carol was such an amazing organizer um, and you know I've joked around with her before but her house became like the LGMD warehouse you know <laughs> she had so much stuff for this conference we just really felt so like invested in this event though what I feel like is so important is it was patient-led like the most important thing was it was patient-driven patient-led patient-organized and I think what drug developers need to know, I think the investment community needs to know, startups need to know, is that this community is very, very, very well organized. Um, and we're unified. That's the other thing, is that we're very unified. Um, there's many different organizations in our community but we're all very unified and we're all in it for one thing and that's to find cures for all these different forms of Lynn Girdle. 
and we're very serious as patients about it and like we're very dedicated to it so i think that um you know brad you know what you have done brad williams who's i'm speaking to right now brad what you have done for the limb girdle community is amazing you know people just don't know all the things that you've done um behind the scenes but you guys if y'all want to know somebody that you know deserves man of the year award it's brad williams and so if i could give you like an applause online i would um but you're just an awesome person I'm oh so there you go there you go embarrassing me again Catherine. <laughs> But you're just like a dear friend of mine, and I'm so thankful for what you do for all of us. And, um, you know, every time something comes up and I don't understand the science, you know, Brad's the one I call, you know, because he just, he knows the science, you know. Um, and now I'm just very thankful. And so at this point, we're going to um, invite Carol Abraham to come on, and she's going to start sharing her screen. Um, so Carol Abraham is the founder of Limb Girdle Muscular Dystrophy Awareness Day. And the reason why we wanted to do LGMD Down the Hill um, on this particular week is because Awareness Day is on the 30th. And we wanted this to kind of be um, a week of advocacy and awareness for our community. And so Carol's going to come on and talk with us. Carol, welcome. Um, Carol, I'm excited to hear you share about Awareness Day. Um, I know that I've got on my Facebook profile the, the template for Awareness Day, and I know that everyone's excited. We've been sharing our stories. I want to hear from you about this amazing thing that you created. And so um, welcome, and feel free to start sharing. Can you see the screen, Catherine? Yes, ma'am. Wonderful. Um, thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this today. I'm very excited. As many of you may know, um, next Wednesday, September 30th, we will be celebrating the sixth annual um, LGMD Awareness Day. This has been kind of a dream of mine for years. Growing up with LGMD, um, I found it so frustrating that no one really understood the disease, um, whether I was going to a doctor or um, people in the general community. When you mentioned muscular dystrophy, they just always associated muscular dystrophy with Duchenne's. Um, many were surprised that oh, a female could have the disease and so forth. So um, I really felt very passionate that we needed to raise more awareness about this. So back in 2014, I um, connected with some of my other um, LGMD friends through the different LGMD foundations and kind of pitched the idea to them that, you know, I'd really like to do something like an awareness day. And they were all great supporters and said to go for it. So um, we held our first LGMD awareness day in 2015 and to be completely honest i cannot believe how this has grown on an international basis over the past six years um, it truly is amazing how all of us working together and in sharing our story how we're able to raise awareness and let people know that we exist. We're letting researchers know. We're helping to educate the medical profession, um, our friends, our family, um, coworkers, and so forth about what it's like to live with limb girdle muscular dystrophy, how there is a need for um, advancement in research to find us all a treatment and a cure. Thank you, Carol. And, and okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, fortunately, um, social media has really provided us a great platform for us to spread awareness. 
So even though that there is the pandemic this year, um, we're not letting that hamper our activities um, through social media. I feel that we're still able to be as effective, if not even more effective this year. I think so. And, you know, I'm thinking about the community as well of just giving people the tools to share what their disease is because, you know, like you mentioned, the confusion about is, do you have MS or do you have MD? I mean, I can't tell you how many times. I remember my grandmother had a whole church praying that my MS would be cured. I mean, <laughs> she didn't even my own grandmother thought I had MS. You know, it's just, it's just a lack of education and understanding and being able to just share this and talk with people in a format is so crucial. I know you have a social media campaign as well, Carol. Can you share about that? Sure. Um, every year we try and introduce a, um, a campaign to help us raise awareness. And this year, um, if any of you have been following us on social media, we introduced Gertie, our um, new LGMD ambassador. And here's my little Gertie that um, I cre created to help me raise awareness. And basically with the Gertie campaign, we're asking people to go to um, our website, which is lgmd-info.org on the website, um, on the very front page of the website, you can then um, print, color, and post. We've got a downloadable file where um, you will get an outlined image of Gertie that then you can color um, to, to personalize your own Gertie. And then what we ask is that you take a selfie with Gertie and post it to social media. But we, Gertie wants the world to know more about LGMD. So we ask that when you post your selfie with Gertie, that you try to share a fact about LGMD. Um, and Gertie provides a number of facts right there on the page, so you don't have to go too far. You could use any of the LGMD facts that Ralph shared today um, in one of the resources for our day on the hill. But what the idea is that by posting your selfie with Gertie and sharing a fact, you will then be helping to raise awareness within your circle of friends. And one of the important things that we ask that you do anytime you do share your selfie is use the hashtag LGMD awareness. That way we can um, keep track a little bit of where Gertie's been traveling and um, just how diligently Gertie has been working with us and you to raise awareness. And then our second campaign that we have, um, I'm kind of known as the Lime Green Lady, but um, we have our Lime Green for Lynn Girdle campaign. And we encourage you to promote Lime Green for LGMD awareness. Um, we want Lime Green to become associated with limb girdle the same way that um, pink is associated with breast cancer awareness. So whether you're out in public, you know, something as simple as wearing a green ribbon on your shirt is a great um, conversation conversation starter. Someone might say, oh, why do you, what's that green ribbon for? And you can let them know that it's to raise awareness of LGMD, maybe give them a little fact or so forth. So um, however you can incorporate a little lime green in your life, um, you can also then help advocate and spread awareness of LGMD. And as always, if you have any questions on how you can be involved in um, raising awareness of LGMD, um, feel free to email us. The email address is on the screen. It's lgmd.day at gmail.com. Um, our website, lgmdinfo.org, has a number of resources 
available to you. If there's anything we can help with, just reach out to us. And um, although LGMD Awareness Day is on September 30th, it really is a year-round um, focus that we need to address. Um, so in any way that you can help us, I greatly appreciate it. And I think that's, do you have any other questions, Catherine? No, I think that's great. Um, just everybody support, you know, the efforts of Awareness Day on the 30th and, um, you know, and each year, you know, during Muscular Dystrophy Awareness Month, you know, just remember, um, we plan to have the National LGMD Conference every other year. Um, so in the intervening years, uh, we'll have educational webinars for LGMD that you can um, partake of that will be on our platform. Um, and you could go to the speakfoundation.com to, to learn more about them. Um, but I just think it's really important that we support Awareness Day and make sure that people know what our, our disease is and help them to understand it better. So thank you, Carol, so much. And uh, we're just so thankful for what you've done by raising awareness for our disease. And I just wanna say thank you from our community. Thank you, Catherine. If I can just interject that, just to let people know that they can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and it's um, LGMD Day. Okay, thank you so much. I'm so <laughs> excited. Um, Brad, we're gonna invite you back we actually have some giveaways. We are giving away two mobility scooters today. Um, and so in order to have uh, been in the, um, the giveaway, you had to have um, registered through Eventbrite. And then we selected the winners from the pool of candidates there. And it was random, you know, we selected a group of people and then from that point we, we selected the two. Um, so the two winners that we're happy to announce, Brad is actually going to announce them. What we're going to do is contact you um, this week and make sure we have your correct mailing address and the mobility scooters will be shipped to your home. And so that's all you have to do um, to win these travel mobility scooters which um, our wonderful, um, a company named Top Mobility is um, the company that we work with. They give us a discount um, for purchasing them in bulk, and we're just excited about them. Um, the Clifton Lewis Good, Good Life Foundation works with Top Mobility as well. If you've never heard of his foundation, he does great work with actually giving away mobility scooters. Um, so, Brad, do you have our winners to announce? Uh, yes, uh, yes, I do, Catherine. Uh, but be, before I announce the names, I just wanted to thank all of you uh, who are, you know, who registered and who are here, you know, uh, at our webinar today. You know, thank you so much. You're uh, making a very valuable, you know, contribution to uh, LGMD awareness and visibility you know, on, on behalf of our elected representatives, you know, as well as uh, to other parties. And, you know, thanks to all who registered for, um, for the scooter um, uh, uh, award. Uh, okay, so uh, without further ado, I'll, uh, the first winner of the mobility scooter is Brooklyn Garza. Uh, Congratulations, Brooklyn. And the second uh, winner is Jonathan Rizzo. Uh, congratulations, Jonathan. Great, so our winners are Jonathan Rizzo and Brooklyn Garza. And we'll be contacting you this week and you should be receiving your mobility scooters um, within the next few weeks. So. Congratulations, and we're so excited. I wanna thank our presenters today. I wanna to especially thank Ralph Yanez for being our volunteer director of LGBT on the Hill and all the efforts and work he's put into this this year. 
So thank you, Ralph, from all of us in the LGMD community. Absolutely. And then, thank you. You are, we just love you. And thank you, Carol, for all that you've done and are doing for Awareness Day. And we just want to say thank you so much for being with us today as our honored guest. Thank you. And then Brad, thank you so much for all that you're doing and to make the National Conference come alive each year. We are so excited to have you part as our chairman of the National LGMD Conference. So at this point, we're going to close. Uh, can, can I, can I uh, just say a big thank you for Catherine for uh, uh, making all of this happen today? Oh, well, it's my pleasure. I love it. And I'm so thankful for all of our community. I feel like we're all family. And, um, you know, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm excited for the future for all these treatments that are coming around the corner. So thank you guys so much. Remember on October 9th, we will have a webinar with ML Biosolutions for the LGMD2I community. If you'd like to register for that, sign up at thespeakfoundation.com. Thank you all so much and thank you for being with us.